Hey everyone, welcome back. So Halloween is very nearly here and I have teamed up with Snazaroo to bring you this skull face paint tutorial. I've created a Grim Reaper in the past using cream based products but this one has been created using water based face paint. So I have got a bunch of products including Snazaroo's Halloween special effects face paint kit. It comes with blood, a sponge, a spatula and some FX wax but I've also got three of their classic paints which I'm going to be using and I'll be using the FX wax from the kit. To start with we want to disguise the eyebrows so I'm going to be using the FX wax with the spatula and I'm going to decant a very small amount out and then I'm smoothing that over the brow hair in the direction of the hair growth. This product has been designed to work with water based paints so once you've blocked your hair down you can go straight over this with the paint. As I mentioned this does come in the Halloween special effects box and you can use this to create different types of wounds. I'm now going in with a white pencil just to map out the shape of the skull on my face. If you don't have white you can use black, it really doesn't matter. This is just so you've got a guide as to where you're painting the white and where you're painting the black. I always like to emphasise the front of the eye socket where the brow bone is and this is just to give it a slightly more creepy appearance. You don't have to, you can keep your eye sockets relatively round. If you're a bit unsure about the shape of your eye socket, you can use your little finger to feel where your natural eye socket is and draw the line a couple of millimetres underneath. And then for the nose, you're going to be drawing a triangle, but you don't want it to be completely symmetrical. So make either the left side or the right side slightly higher. I'm now penciling in roughly where I want the top jaw to be. And this is going to come down at the front either side of my top lip so that I have room to paint the teeth across. The back teeth go quite far round, but because this is a theatrical skull, when you're facing forward you need to be able to see the black gap. And that's why I've drawn the line either side of my top lip so that it's going to be visible when I'm facing forward. But feel free to make it as realistic as you like. For the skull colouring, I'm going to be taking a very small amount of barely beige and I'm going to mix that in with a classic white. And I'm going to be using this Nazaru face paintbrush to apply it, but I'll also be using a sponge. The paint may appear white, but it's actually slightly off-white because we've used that barely beige in it just to knock back that starkness and it gives us a slightly more bone colour. We don't want it to be overly white, it will appear a bit more under this lighting but it's definitely a little bit more of a bone shade. When you first apply face paint it can be quite wishy-washy, I like to go over it while it's still wet with a sponge in a stipple motion to give it more of a uniformed finish. Once that first layer is dried I'm then going to stipple over another layer of colour this is going to enable us to get more coverage and really build up that opacity. If you're happy to use white, you could go straight in with the Snazaroo Clown White. It's definitely more of a fuller coverage and the consistency is a lot thicker. I'm using the sponge in a stipple motion over the hairs to help disguise them. I like that this brush has a really flat edge because it allows you to go around all those lines that you've applied and make sure that you're not going over the edges. It doesn't matter if you do because we're going to be going over that with black and black pretty much covers anything. So like I said earlier, get your first colour down. Once that's dried, you can start to build up on it and that will help to disguise any brush stroke marks. If you find your paints applying in quite a wishy-washy consistency, then you're probably applying too much water to paint. So a little tip would be to really work your brush over the paint until you've got a nice thicker consistency. Then you'll find it should apply less translucent. Now just so you know, these face paints are non-hazardous and they are safe around the mouth area. They're also suitable for sensitive skin, although it is always recommended that you test it on a small area first. Much like cosmetics, everybody's different and you just never know what you might react to. I always use these paints on my nephews because they come off like a dream. They're water soluble, so they just come off with warm soap and water. So that's my first layer down on the bottom half of my face and as you can see the coverage is already very good. I've now mixed up a thicker consistency of white with a hint of the barely beige and I'm going to reapply that over the entire face. Once again, don't make it too wishy-washy, otherwise you will disturb the first layer. Now I'm going in with my classic black paint. A little tip would be to start with the eye sockets because this is usually the highest part that you're going to apply the black paint to. When you're using black, the last thing you want to do is rest your hand on your face where you've already painted and then print that over the white. So a little tip would be to rest your elbow on the table so that you can pivot your hand and your face but still have a steady hand and keep your balance. Much like when we use the white paint, get your base layer down first, fill in the majority of the colour and then go in with a slightly smaller brush to crisp up the edges. 
If you get a small amount of black over the white, I would say go in with a tiny bit of the clown white. Because it's slightly thicker, you can go over the black and it's not going to leave behind any greyness. By the way, the brush I'm using is from a set of three. They're the pink starter brushes by Snazaroo and they're about £3.15. Super cheap, but really do the job. I'm using the tip of the brush to draw an outline around my triangular shape on the nose and then I'm filling it in. I will be coming back to this later to redefine the nose because I want to add a little bit of a white stripe through the centre. So now anything that wasn't painted white, you just want to go around and redefine with the black. On these little cheek sections, I half fill them in and shade them with my finger, but I decide later on to go over them completely in black. But it is a good way to show you that you can shade with face paints. You now want to black out around your ear and around your jawline. Another flat brush like we used for the white is a great one for this. I'm blacking out the temple area and filling that in with a black paint. And I'm also emphasising that there's a gap between the lower jaw and the top half by filling this little section in black too. As I mentioned earlier, the Snazaroo Clown White is slightly thicker in consistency and can go over black very well. So I'm using that to create a smaller triangle the other way around coming into the black. Going back to the eyes, I'm applying a coal liner along the waterline. This is going to help complete the eyes and make them look really, really dark. Don't forget to tight line with this and use a little bit of mascara to disguise your lashes. Next I'm moving on to the mouth. I'm starting with a line on the top lip in the very centre and then drawing even lines either side of that to mimic teeth. You also want to do this on your bottom lip. You can make the teeth along your bottom lip slightly smaller than your top but I've just mirrored them. I'm going to move on to the rest of the skull and come back to the teeth in a little while. I'm now taking a black eyeshadow, any cheap black eyeshadow would do, and I'm going to tap off all the excess product in the bristles. So I've just got a very faint amount of black left on there. And using a very, very light hand, I'm dusting that on to the brow bone and also around the sides of the forehead. If you don't use a really light hand, you can disturb the paint underneath. I also find that using a lightly dampened brush, and I mean very lightly dampened, can help to blend this in. Again, if you make it too wet, it will just disturb the paint underneath. Using this in a really subtle way is going to help to define the skull and make it look more three-dimensional. At the minute, it looks very flat because that stark white colour disguises the natural curves and contours of the face. Much like the rest of the skull, I'm getting the first layer down and then I'm going to build up onto it, so it is a work in progress. Start very lightly and then you can always apply more. I'm adding a very small amount of that to the sides of the bridge of the nose and I'm also going to apply it around the rim of the triangle shape. Doing this just emphasises the edge of the skull, making it look like it's got a slight lip to it. We're going to do the same on the top half of the jaw and we're also going to be doing it on the bottom jaw in a little while. I'm now redefining the very outer edges of the forehead. Adding a slight darkness to the temple area makes the front of the skull look more curved. I'm now going back to the teeth. I would definitely recommend getting a reference image up of a skull for you to follow the teeth. But you can also lift your top lip up and just look at your own to give you an idea of placement. Teeth have a very long root to them, that's why we draw them up the top of the lip and then shade in between each tooth to give the illusion that they are three dimensional. I was going to paint in some extra back teeth into this little section here but I decided to paint it black. Straight on it's definitely more effective. But once again, steps are definitely optional and if you have the time and you feel like it will look better, you can go in and paint extra teeth around that back section. Going back to my black paint, I'm now going around each individual tooth creating a slight contour to it and then I'm going in with a small amount of white paint to add a bit of highlight to each tooth. Snazaroo have such a wide range of colours so if you wanted you could go in with some other shades to give the teeth a bit of colour, obviously depending on the character and theme of your skull. Going back to my fluffy brush and a very small amount of the cheap black eyeshadow, I'm working that on the bottom half of the jaw and you can see when I've got my head to the side now it's definitely taking shape and looks a lot more three dimensional. Now all the elements of the skull are complete, it's just about redefining them. So I'm going back in with the eyeshadow on the outer edges just to make that a little bit darker. Remember if you're going out trick or treating or if you're going to a party and it's going to be quite dark, you're going to lose a lot of this. So you want it to be dark enough that it's still visible. A little finishing touch to the face is to add a few cracks to the skull. Try not to make them too symmetrical. You can do a couple that branch off of each other and then some singular cracks. Again, rest your arm on the table so that you can balance. 
I'm adding a very small amount of shading around each crack, again optional. Now if you're wearing a costume on your bottom half that's great, but sometimes your neck's still visible, so just go in and paint in your vertebrae. I definitely didn't worry about taking my time with this section, I just got it done because once the wig's on it's not that visible, but you can really go to town with it. Then to finish off the look I added this beautiful headpiece that I got from Rock and Rose. This is their Martha Rose crown and I think it works so well with a skull look. And I did try a black wig with it but I just think that the purple just gives it a really beautiful finish especially against the creamy tone of the rose crown. Everything I've used will be linked in the description bar for you. Be sure to check out the Snazaroo Halloween face paint kits. And as I said before, they have an array of classic face paints to choose from. I really hope you love it as much as I did creating it for you. Please give the tutorial a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you've missed my previous Halloween tutorials, the playlist is on screen. And if you want to follow me outside of YouTube, my social handles are also on screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!